The Russian-Ukrainian war has literally raised the question of the feasibility of using tanks, the weapon that largely determined the character of World War II and without which virtually every military conflict in the second half of the 20th century was fought. What a strong influence on tanks has a war now blazing in the center of Europe. You can imagine the evolution of the design of the prospective German main battle tank KF-51. In this video, we will talk about the revolutionary modernization of this tank and try to understand whether it will help to return these fighting machines to their former importance on the battlefield. Spoiler, the conclusions will be interesting. In 2022, the K-51 Panther tank became the first fourth-generation tank to be shown in the West. Two years later, on the eve of Euro Saturday 2024, the novelty from Rheinmetall was again presented at the arms exhibition in Paris. However, this time the toxic name Panther was removed from the name of the tank. We'll tell below why this name is considered toxic. But now the tank was called much more concise KF-51U. That is, Panther was replaced by U. What does this letter mean in the abbreviation of the tank? A lot. It hides the whole essence of modernization. It stands for a version of the tank with an unmanned turret. What is this combat vehicle? As in the previous version, the KF-51 Panther, the KF-51U uses the Leopard 2A4 tank hull, albeit significantly modernized. In particular, the ammunition has been moved from the hull where it was located to the left of the driver mechanic to the new unmanned combat module. The tank commander has a separate seat with an individual hatch. This solution is similar to that used in the new Leclerc variant. However, the main changes were made to the tank turret and more precisely to its combat module. The KF-51U received a completely new combat module called CUT, which stands for Concept Unmanned Turret. This module is unmanned and remotely operated. In other words, it's an unmanned turret. And undoubtedly, this revolutionary innovation was adopted taking into account the experience of combat operations in Ukraine. There, tanks, including Western tanks, Leopards, Abrams, Challengers, were generally unable to show anything significant. The Ukrainian counteroffensive did not achieve any goal. The footage of burned Leopards flew around the world. By the way, this is probably why the word Panther was removed from the name of the new German tank. Let us remind our viewers that the Panther was one of the Wehrmacht tanks in World War II which the Germans lost. And here again, German tanks are burning in Ukraine just like 80 years ago. Not very pleasant associations. The war in Ukraine revealed two weaknesses in Western tanks. The first is low mobility due to their high weight. Sometimes these vehicles simply got stuck in Ukrainian fields. And the second is complete defenselessness against drones. A $300 FPV drone could immobilize a tank worth several million dollars, and then the Russians would finish it off with artillery. To solve the first problem, the KF-51 tank was made 10 tons lighter than the Leopard 2A7 tank. At the same time, the engine remained the same. V-12 MTU MB873 KA501 with an output of 1,500 horsepower. Consequently, the KF-51 will have a specific power of about 25.4 horsepower per ton. This would be the highest among all modern tanks. To solve the second problem, an unmanned turret is made. What does it mean? Firstly, the exclusion of people from the turret allows for reducing the volume of its internal space and increasing the thickness of the turret's top armor, which is mainly hit by drones. Secondly, even penetration of the armor in most cases will not put the tank out of action, as the people placed under the turret in a special armored capsule remain unharmed. Finally, thirdly, part of the volume previously occupied by people can be used to place powerful electronic warfare equipment to interrupt communication between the operator and the drone. The question of the caliber of the new tank's cannon is very interesting. Rheinmetall demonstrated, as it did two years ago, a version of the tank with the latest 130mm gun, the RH-130 L-52. Again, the war in Ukraine has shown that modern 120mm tank guns are already weak against Russian tanks. If the 120mm gun RH-120 L-44 standing on tanks, Leopard 2A5, and above has a penetration of 660mm of armor, the new 130mm gun can penetrate up to 1000mm of armor, according to the developers. 
That is, to date, there are no tanks in the world that could withstand a blow from this gun even in the front projection of the turret. At the same time, the French-German consortium KNDS, which is developing the EMBT tank, which is an alternative to the KF-51, equips its tank with a 140mm gun. The decision on what caliber the cannon on the new main German tank will probably be based on what caliber the US will use with the M1E3 Abrams. This will be a breakthrough in NATO standards. Rheinmetall has a good chance in this regard as it already equips the US Army. The currently in-service M1A2 Abrams uses a 120mm cannon from this German manufacturer. An automatic loading system for the gun is mandatory as the turret is uninhabited. That is, the crew of the tank will consist of three people. There will be no loader, but there's a place for a fourth tanker to the left of the driver's seat. We'll talk more about it. Ammunition is located in the aft part of the turret. There are two magazines for storing different types of shells. For example, high explosives and shaped charges for fighting other tanks. The overall ammunition capacity is very limited to 25 shells. The German Leopard 2 main battle tank has 42 shells in the turret. The 12.7 by 99 mm BMG machine gun is mounted coaxially with the main gun. This means that the machine gun automatically aims where the main gun is aimed. This solution is somewhat surprising. Paired machine guns are now considered old-fashioned, as modern tank designs include remote-controlled machine gun units with 360-degree rotation capability on the turret roof. For example, the EMBT from KNDS, also with an uninhabited turret, does not have a twin machine gun. But it should be said that the KF-51U has a 7.62mm RMG 7.62 remote-controlled triple-barrel machine gun mounted on the turret roof to combat drones. If the high-rate-of-fire machine gun is operated with only one barrel, the barrel heats up too quickly, significantly reducing accuracy and range. It's noteworthy that Rheinmetall did not mention a launcher for its barrage munitions, i.e. kamikaze drones, with which the tank is armed when announcing the KF-51U. The KF-51 has a turret-folding launcher for four Rheinmetall Hero 120 kamikaze drones, 12.5 kilogram barrage munitions, with a 3.5 kilogram warhead of either shape charge or high explosive type, a cross-shaped tail, and capable of flying up to 40 kilometers range day and night due to thermal imaging channel. And the KF-51U mentions only one reconnaissance drone on board. It's currently unknown whether Hero can be additionally launched instead of it, or whether the KF-51U can be equipped with a launcher for Hero 120 if necessary. As we think, designers in the military are not yet sure about the feasibility of kamikaze drones as part of a tank. There are a lot of pros, but also a lot of cons. In particular, in this case, a fourth crew member will be needed to control the drones, but a place for him, just in case, is provided. The KF-51U, like the KF-51, has dynamic armor on the hull. This solution is designed to prevent shaped charges from penetrating the armor in the event of a hit. Again, there are plenty of videos on the internet that show the Ukrainian military installing the old Soviet Contact-1 dynamic armor on Western tanks. Hopefully, the dynamic armor on the KF-51U will have significantly higher protective characteristics than Contact-1. The KF-51U will also have several active defense systems. Either Rheinmetall's APS or Iron Fist will be used as a hard kill system for incoming projectiles. The KF-51U with Iron Fist was shown at the Eurosatory exhibition. It's made by Israeli manufacturers IWI and Elbit and is a competing product to the Trophy system made by Israeli company Rafael. EMBT from KNDS uses Trophy. In Rheinmetall's APS and Trophy, sensors detect an approaching projectile or rocket. The explosive charge detonates fully automatically firing shrapnel at the shell and destroying it before it reaches the tank. The Rheinmetall booklet also mentions an aerosol curtain that camouflages the tank in the upper hemispheres and the infrared range. In addition, the tank is equipped with advanced electronics and optics. An advanced fire control system and other state-of-the-art technology such as the BMS system, a battle management system interface that will allow the crew to communicate and operate within the C2's Unified Combat Command and Control Network. The BMS integrates with various sensors and systems on board the tank, providing real-time collection, processing, and dissemination of combat information, 
enabling the tank crew to make informed decisions and respond quickly to the changing tactical environment. However, it's worth remembering that this is just a technology demonstrator, in other words, a prototype. At the same time, this model is a more advanced version compared to the first KF-51. While summarizing all of the above, we can say that the KF-51U is in fact the deepest modernization of the Leopard 2 and is naturally more affordable than a full-fledged new tank. So it would seem that the German concern has all chances to find buyers for such modernization, especially given the prevalence of second Leopards in the world. But there's a Franco-German project of the EMBT main battle tank in which Rheinmetall does not participate. What will the German government, which has announced an allocation of 100 billion euros to modernize the German army do? Will it choose a tank from the French-German consortium, KNDS, which includes French Nexter and German Krauss Maffei Wegmann? What about Rheinmetall, which employs thousands of Germans? Increase funding and pick two tanks? But the German economy is now stagnant and the living standards of Germans are falling. Yes, not an easy choice for the German authorities, but if we're guided by higher order logic, if we have strategic thinking, the choice is obvious. Many NATO experts, politicians, and military men say that a fight with Russia is inevitable and will take place in the very foreseeable future. Therefore, based on this logic, the German authorities should order two different tanks. Yes, this will require more money, but the efficiency will be higher. In some respects, one tank will be stronger, and in some respects, the other. And in the end, they will complement each other. After all, if Russia wins, the level of Germans and citizens of other Western countries will fall much more than because of the need to arm themselves before the real Russian threat. Who does not feed his own army, feeds someone else's? This is a truth for all time. And that's all we have for today. What do you think about this new German tank? Does it meet modern requirements? And does Germany need two main battle tanks? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and share your thoughts in the comments, and see you soon.